Hello, this is Dr. Crystal Ruff, and this is the last installment of Writing Your Thesis, What You Should Know. Seriously, this will save you weeks of work. So, in our fifth installment of this video series, we've talked already, one, about background and general tips. We've talked about headings and templates. We've talked about frames and hyperlinking. We've spoken about how Zotero is a hero, and you should, you should get that software. It'll save you a lot of time and effort. And we're talking now about number five. GraphPad Prism is the best graphing software. Just buy it. This is the last in our series. I do realize you're a student. You're broke. You're going to talk around this. You're going to walk around. You're going to try other graphing softwares. But please, trust me, I've gotten you this far. GraphPad Prism is the best. Now, it's a couple of hundred bucks. So I suggest you beg, borrow, and steal, and somehow convince your supervisor to buy it for the lab. It is the best thing you're going to find for any sort of publication. It's user friendly. It's amazing. Send out the trial. They've got a free, like a 30-day, I think, trial version. So try it out. I went through lots of programs as a starving student. I understand. Eventually, my supervisor ended up ended up buying it for the lab because, you know, it it is just the best. You just have to buy it. Find a way. Find a way and get it done. Okay. So that being said, GraphPad Prism is the best graphing software. So it's a vector graphing system. So it works kind of the same as Adobe. It gives really high quality images, and you can export it into any of the any of the other programs. It's really good that way. Let's go through the list. I also resisted, then relented. It is the best. Just just buy it. Once you make a template, you can reuse it. So also copy family. So it is a little bit daunting at first, particularly with if you don't know how to navigate around the program and you put all of your data in, it can be a little bit daunting. So I'm going to teach you some of the tricks to navigate the program. The key is to input your mean, SEM, and N if you're doing a two variable thing. So if you're if you're doing like a wild type and knockout, for example, if you can graph your data or if you can assess your data using a t-test, use your mean, SEM, and N. If you need to use an ANOVA, the GraphPad program will do the ANOVAs for you and you have to put in data. But it's easier just to mean standard deviation and N. You can change the axes, grid type, column width, etc. GraphPad Prism is very good because if you have to have 17 graphs that are exactly the same, It'll, it'll let you reuse your templates. And we talked about templates in the Word files. Um, it has statistical software, so ANOVA, etc. It all depends on how you put the data in. And there are really good export options because it's a vector program. So let's get started with GraphPad Prism. Let's find you all programs. GraphPad Prism. Just buy it. I know what you're thinking. Just do it. <laughs> okay. You'll you'll thank me later. You'll, it's worth it. All right. Oh, it's getting a little warm in here. Okay. So, GraphPad Prism opens, and you can see it starts with here's the main GraphPad, and it's really user friendly. So you can stick in what you want to use. So, for example, I always like using a grouped graph. GraphPad is great because they have very very extensive online support and video video support as well. So you can see going through kind of like this. You can go through all of the programs and all of your troubleshooting within the GraphPad website. So today we're going to do a grouped graph. That's what I did for most of my PhD. Start with any empty data, uh, data table, choose a graph. For this, we're going to enter and plot error val values already calculated elsewhere because it's easier. So this is if your data is comparing two things and you can do the t-test in Excel. I'm going to show you a different way that you can use if you need to run an ANOVA on revariables. But first of all, we're just going to do it the easy way. Error values calculated elsewhere, create. Where are we going to get these error values? Ah, uh, let's make an Excel sheet. So we've got this Excel sheet already here. I typed in some numbers. So we want to calculate mean, standard deviation, n, an easy command, equals average, and then we'll just do our, do our thingy, come back here, get in the brackets, there you go, enter, standard deviation, 
Some radiation. Oh, no, don't want that one. Uh, A to A. Eight. Enter. Come on. Oh, standard deviation, sorry. Standard dive. There you go, and then equals count. And you can do, I usually do SEM. You can, because um, it makes your error bar smaller. This is a, this is a science tip. SEM makes your error bar smaller. Um, you can find the Excel formula for SEM online as well what to type in. It's like the standard deviation of the average of the number. It's copy and paste that. All right, so we're extending this column that we have. Let's pretend each of these is an animal. For example, we have seven measurements from each animal. We can compare these. So we've got two groups. So we can, we'll make this easier. What we'll do is, so we're going to take each of these data. I'm copying it. I think it's Control Shift T that'll, yep, so that'll transpose it. So if it's copied vertically, it will paste horizontally. Control Shift T. And then we'll do another one. Um, so we're gonna have like we're gonna have three group three groups. Maybe I just really wanna get all these pasted. Sorry. <laughs> Control Shift T. And we'll just put three in the other group for now because I don't wanna have to get all of them here. Control Shift T. And these are like two groups of animals, for example. You know, these are the wild types or something. Knockouts, because we really like science like that. Control Shift T. And automatically, what it does in this software, it's so good. We have our data tables on the side, so where this is shown, it graphs it automatically. So here are our six animals within the groups. So we can type in too if we go back to our data table. Data set A is the group one, group two, A, B, C, for example. Put it in, we click on graph and it automatically goes in. So the titles are group one and group two. Um, you can type in your X and Y axis title. It's really easy. Say I don't like the color of this graph. So I right click here and I click format this entire data set. So you can choose whether it's this bar or the entire set of them or all sets. So I can make all of the fill colors red. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our graph into a layout. I'm clicking on the layouts button and you can select your your array of graphs. So this is if you have a figure with multiple images within, if you need to align your graphs. This can also be exported into such programs as, you know, the Adobe Illustrator sort of thing, Corel Draw, etc. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to clone our data set, first of all. So I'm going to right click on data one, duplicate family. So this is really easy, particularly if you have to have seven graphs that are the same with just different data. Um, same layouts, you can duplicate just the, the data sheet or the linked sheet. We're going to do the family prefix one. Okay. And what GraphPad will do is just create another one with one data one. Exactly the same thing, all of your settings are preserved. So we're going to make another copy, duplicate family. Prefix two, and now we're going to create our layout. Layout, excuse me, with the three of them. Let's do three graphs like that. Uh, include master title. You don't want that. Um, you can affect your background color and the orientation of your page. Okay. And what you do is you use your mouse. You can drag each of your graphs onto the layout. Second graph. 
third graph. And I find that for these, what you'll want to do is keep each graph, so you want to keep one copy with each one labeled, and you want to keep another copy that you're going to export into your file. So each different figure will have a separate font, so you'll want to get rid of all of the fonts in each of these, and oh gosh, you can do that by affecting actually the individual graphs. So get rid of data, this, and deleting, by the way, delete. And it takes it out of your out of your major layout. So you can see that it's gone in that particular graph. Say I want these groups. Say I don't like them where they are. I'm going to highlight them and I can move them into the actual graph space. Oh, marker. I can move it into the actual graph space. I can move them around. If I want group two first, they can go there. A really, a really nifty thing that GraphPad will do. If you go back to your layout, you can you know, just try control. Yes. If I control and click on each of them, and I go to change equalize graph size, it will automatically oh, select your graphs only, all graphs in the layout. It'll automatically scale your graphs to the same size. So you can choose to reduce the size of large graphs or increase the size of small graphs. And it will automatically make them all the same. That's very good if, if something's happened and, and you need to do that. A really nifty thing is you can affect the error bars. So if you click, you can right click on anything in this graph. There you go. I left clicked. I had to double left click. Style appearance, it's a bar graph, we've got the mean with SD, error bars. Say I want them to look different, I want them to look like that, below, or both, let's have them go both, four point, okay. And we affected just that one group. Also sometimes if you have more of a, like a scatter plot chart, you want some of the error bars to go up and some of them to go down. And in order to do that, you can affect each individual error bar. So you can say data group one, change all data sets, or you can just affect the one type. So the next thing we're going to do is new data, probably. So we're going to create a new data sheet. All right, so let's just go to new file. New data table and graph. There we go. And now what I'm going to do, I'm still going to do my grouped graph, but say you have three sets of data. It asks you for the raw data if you don't click anything here. Take a look at it. Okay, so we're going to enter and plot a single Y value for each point for the ANOVA. So this is if you have three groups, like treatment, control, and other treatment or three different time points, for example. We're going to put all of your data sets in that we've got in our Excel sheet. Control copy. And then I'm going to paste them in. And if I go to analyze, then we can do our two way ANOVA. So grouped analyses, two way ANOVA. OK. And um, you can research online what the ANOVAs mean, you know, like how, whether you need a one-way or a two-way, and what sort of post hoc tests you need. We'll choose a bone Ferroni post hoc test, compare each column to other columns, let's say, and then we click OK, and it will generate a two-way ANOVA of the data under results. And so you can look at your p-value, you can look at your post hoc test, all of your columns compared. So it's a really great software. It's very, very user friendly. It's easy to use. GraphPad, you know, you can use the template file to create anything you want. Exporting is very easy. File. You can send to Word, which is very easy, or export in any format you want. I'm going to choose to send to Word. 
and it'll hyperlink as well so you can as long as you have the graphpad program you can edit it within your word document so i just double clicked this which is now in my word document that we've created and it will open the graph pad and allow me to manipulate the graph. When I close this, anything we do on the graph pad will be reflected in this new augmented document. So one of the things I'm going to warn you, if you have rather large chapters, this could cause issues in the chapter. Save frequently. You might want to save your graph pads kind of in another file and import them or save all of your augment until the end and save your documents every 15 minutes particularly when you're dealing with graphpad. Um, it's the greatest program ever but it does take up a lot of memory. And so we've just inserted this graph into here. You can insert all of your images that you want. You can put it you know in your in your framing we learned. So we'll, we'll type uh, figure 7 graph and we'll do some hyperlinking. Where is it? References. Insert caption. Figure one. Graph. Um, OK. And we put it, we can put it oops, into our, come on you. Put it into a frame. Into our frame. And we can, everything's updated automatically because, uh, because that's how we've hyperlinked in the document. You can highlight this, right click, update field, all of that automatically, automatically updates. So this brings us to the end of our videos. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully you can pass this on like it's been passed on to me. And I think I want to leave you with a quotation from my father. I credit my father with this. and it, it can be very daunting to write a thesis. And I know, and I've been there, and hopefully this can help you. Something my father said to me, he would say, Crystal, a year from now, this will all be a memory. So work hard. Get it done. There are going to be times when you think it's too much and you're wanting to quit and you're wanting to give up, get it done. A year from now, this will all be a memory. So good luck. Hope this helps. Have a great day.